Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, how do I put it? So so much. Uh, you know, I can see that there's that you you were very passionate about what you were discussing, and we share that passion with you. And uh, what I really liked about you was uh, your session was that you. took that you know you had the courage or more I, if i could say you had the faith to share your own going work as well you know to know that because you know that you know it is something that will result in something that is much much needed as of now and for that we are very grateful so we already have some questions for you i would like to remind the audience that you can use the poll or the activity section of the google um of the google box because if you see on right next to the chat button you have the triangle square those kind of icons you can use that to post your questions and i'm sure uh dr kuti will be more than happy to answer it over here so ma'am i'll start presenting with you with the questions so the first question is uh by gali uh, asking what resources are there to learn more about this field hmm okay So I answer that, yeah. Um, what resources are there to learn more about this field? I came from this uh, cognitive science background, so I studied a lot of brain processes. Uh, these are keywords, yeah, Gayani. You can take this as keywords and you can look into it. I looked into neuroscience. I looked into how the brain learn. Um, the, the the thesis that I did with my PhD was on uh, cognitive processes of language processing, but that was just focusing on low level cognitive processes of copying words. Okay, so it's very very low level processes. So looking at that, I tried to understand other parts of the brain development. So I looked into the work by Peter Gray. I looked into um, the work of um, I studied what Reggio Emilia is, what you know the curriculum that are in early childhood. Looking at that angle and how are they? If you would put them side by side, um, yep. So that's part of it. And and because I I recently studied play therapy, so trying to understand the emotional part of a child, a a, a person. So uh, where where today. Many are talking about mindfulness, so that is another, or how do I say, recent area which I'm currently looking at. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm sure we can connect with you also for more insights because uh, you have gathered this learning over so many years, and you're still, you know, gathering so many resources. So uh, we have another question uh, coming in, who which uh, which is asked by Lakshmi Prakash. Uh, the question is, how are the teachers trained to facilitate the given curriculum? Yeah, I love that question. Okay, um, why, why? Okay, because because we are leading this in Malaysia, it's difficult for me to look for other people that can help me train our learning facilitators. We call the teachers learning facilitators just because I want to run away from the culture thing, the cultural um, effect impact that the uh, the way they think they thought of teachers here in Malaysia is that you teach. You know, you just teach. So I change that as in I rename it as learning facilitators. You do not teach, but you facilitate the learning processes. So that's what I do. And understanding that we are leading this, nobody else is doing this. So my references are Arrow. Um, 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 uh, the first speaker that you had, I forgot his name. I'm sorry. But but looking at Peter Gray, looking at Sudbury schools, looking at this community. Uh, SDE, ASDE, uh, the self-directed learning um, 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 communities, and also the Wonder Educators, um, um, Fairy Dust Teaching. I followed them closely, so I trained myself, of course, with whatever research that I've been doing. Only I train my teachers. <laughs> if you got, if you get what I mean, I'm right there. Yeah, um, I do not allow them to go simply to anybody because. The understanding is different, so I control. As in, I am the only person who trained them, but that that comes with a huge responsibility of holding their spaces, of helping them to unschool, unpack themselves from whatever past that they have had. So everything is on me, and I am now. Uh, I I do have a team now, and I have this one person next to me. Um, I called her my right hand person, whom I train her to to duplicate whatever I do. So she is now able to do to do to do this on her own. So I'm I'm quite happy to be able to you know expand by 
um, grooming uh, potential people in my team. So I, um, uh, how do I say on um, in another word? Um, okay, um, because I do the research work, so I compile and I make it. Um, how do I say the most simplest way to get them to understand why we do it this way? So that's another challenge where you want to make. How do I say it's it's called the brain story, right? How do you make this scientific language like layman language to make to make other people um, easily? How do I say that? <laughs> so that they can understand this easily. Yeah. So at the moment, it's just me. Yeah. All right, ma'am. In fact, we actually have another question from Meera Subramaniam about the curriculum again. Uh, so the question goes like, who frames the curri curri curriculum and do you involve the parents in the same? Okay. Understanding the situation that we are in in Malaysia, if we, if I were to involve parents at this um. Uh, from the beginning, it will be a bit difficult for me because understanding that their thoughts are um, at current, how do I say, um, it's whatever that they have now. They do not have the same experiences that I had before. So I have to be very careful at engaging with them. So what I did with um, is to be able, um, this is this is my hard work. Um, uh, how do I say? This is hard for me to do. It's very challenging for me. But I must be able to have that kind of thought processes of being an educator, being a mom, and uh, being a parent, being a child. I have to play that different role. I have to play that different. I have to put on different hats. And imagining myself being different person, how would it best fit for everybody? Then. Then slowly I, I I involve those that I trust because I want to bring a change. If I were to simply invite everybody, it would be a disaster for me because I need to take care of myself. This courage that I have, the passion that I have, I have to really be careful with that. So only inviting those that I know I can trust to be with me, sit with me, and do the brainstorming session to check whether this is acceptable or not. So yeah, that's how I do it. I I, um, I must tell you, I must share with all of you that being careful is like um, a master word in my life. I have to like be very careful with everything, <laughs> Namrata, because, because when you are leading a change, you do not want people to um, disturb that feeling, that emotions that you're having. You have to be very, very okay with yourself. You must have, you must be at that very um, okay moment to be able to indulge with more input or more researchful or more new knowledge. Um, so I have to, yeah, be, yeah, be very balanced with that as well. Yeah, I see that. that. <laughs> yes. So uh, there's a dilemma that one of our participants wants to present to you, and hoping that you can resolve that dilemma for us. So Gayani Hatru Singha is asking: In a situation where competitive exams pressurize students as well as teachers, how can we practically humanize the education system? You know, how can we make the two ends meet? Ah, uh, this takes years and years of work <laughs> it's not like um uh like like over one night it will not happen uh, this is where advocacy comes in um we need empowered um people or speakers to keep or advocators to keep on to keep on sharing to keep on sharing insights so to keep on sh sharing whatever research that we um that that is there out there and to make it to make it possible and easy accessible for parents or for for the community to read or refer to. For example, if it's about a mental health issue, the things that I do in terms of uh, trying to open up people's mindset towards that is by sharing videos. Um, I do a lot of IG um, IG live sessions. You know, I have to appear on social media a lot of time. I cannot be quiet. Okay, so at one point, Namrata, I I I burned out. <laughs> you know, yeah, I burned out. I was just so tired because here I am having all these hopes with me, and there are people who backlash you, who go, you know, who say things, which is just so not nice to hear. But but um, I just pull myself away for a while and come back again and keep going. So you have to be very strong mentally. 
and that you know you're very aware your self-awareness must be very strong you are aware that there are people like this that the society is not accepting it but how do you play your role how best do you appear in whichever different situation there are um, out there so it will take a long time um, I was I was elected as uh, one of the members to, to, to study the national education policy that was to, I think about a year ago um, again it wasn't easy because it's very political uh, based as well so I was being very careful with it but the more I know the more I um, I'm speechless because there's a lot of things that needs to be corrected. So, um, knowing that, understanding that, I know this will take a long time. So, I took a while to just restructure. I changed the game plan. Okay, so what do I do? I decided to empower the people on the ground. That's what I did. So. This is where I am today. I'm thankful that you are he listening to me. I hope this helps. Um, but that is the, the aim that the, the, the things that I'm trying to do today is to empower parents, to empower people on the ground, to know and understand that it takes we are the person who needs to start the change. If you do not start the change, the change will not happen. So this is where it's coming. Yeah. So to meet the two ends, it's going to be years and years, decades and decades, maybe. <laughs> Namrata, yeah, thank you. So uh, Yasmin Yakut Sultana is actually asking, could you share that one secret to the teachers, and we have quite a few of them in the audience here, who can take an initiative for bringing a change from our workplace like if we want to start the teachers in India want to start how, how what can be that one major, major step that one could take okay um uh, once you get to teachers to make an initiative for bringing change where do I start okay um to have the right understanding of what we're doing okay <laughs> So understanding that we are an educator, what do we edu educate? Who do we educate? What are we educating? When you have the right understanding, ask yourself, why are you in the field? Because that's what I do and that's what I asked each and every one in my team. Why are you here with me? Why do you choose this pathway? Because it's not an easy job to do. So with that understanding, if it's very clear in our mind, then we know our next steps, which is it's not going to be a hassle for you to do extra readings. It's not going to be a hassle for you to, you know, to, to listen to parents' uh, complaints or parents' sharing even. You know, it's not going to be difficult for you to just handle the child, whoever they are, whatever they want to be, because you know why you are an educator. So I think it starts from us. It starts from Deep within us, the self-awareness of where and why we are who we are. So I think that would be the answer. So start with you. Start with you, because that's who I am. Yeah, I wish I can hug all of you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Namrata. Yes, I have to be very careful being a change maker. Eyes, mm -hmm. people are watching, and are all mean. <laughs> So, I think uh, so the, uh, the uh, like Ms. Sultana has said that that, that answers this question quite well very well and because a lot of people who resonate with what you said they connect with what you said and I think uh, it was a very heartfelt uh, a heartfelt vision that you had shared with all of us together you know it is not just something that it is it is actually a very human vision that you have shared with us together i can put it like that and definitely i mean there's there's a need to it and you're quite committed and confident of your goal is another comment that we have had you know from the chat box so uh, we are here to support you and walk the walk with you so i'm sure with together we will build a better a more human future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially considering that we work with that your work involves a lot of uh, work, uh, you know, with a lot of young children who are still learning and developing and are actually going to be the torchbearers in the future. And if we 
you know that is the right time to actually set down a lot of foundations and build let them build their own castles yes <laughs> yes thank you so much ma'am for joining us today uh, a lot of appreciation a lot of respect a lot of gratitude to you from all the way from india and i know because of the covid situation we are connected virtually but uh, i don't think the, the with your passion and zeal there there could be any limitation to what we would like to achieve with you